I thought Congress put a stop to all Task Force X activities. Let's call it Task Force M. M for monster. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you're new here and looking forward to the new DCU, hit that subscribe button and we're hoping for 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're gonna be covering it, talking about it, and discussing it on this channel throughout its run, however long, however many decades it spans. We'll talk about it. Still going, long lasting Energizer batteries keep going and going. Coming up first is Creature Commandos on December 5th, and I'm getting hyped for this series coming to us, obviously from James Gunn, who is the co-CEO of the DC, of DC Studios. I'm really excited because C Creature Commandos really fits into his area of expertise, right? This is what James Gunn does best. The misfit characters coming together, forming a team and saving the day. That's what we all want. Is that what we're gonna get? Who knows? Some journalists have had the opportunity to watch the entire series, others parts of the series, and we'll be covering it as it goes along. We'll have a first reactions video. I believe the embargo lifts early December. We'll do one on that. And I will be reviewing the show after every episode. But I want to talk about something today, just today, just break it down to one rumor that's been going around out there. And I want to talk about it and why I actually absolutely love this rumor because it is cool and it could work and really play into the character and the part of it. But I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. So if you don't want to know uh, this rumor, and again, it's just a rumor, it hasn't been confirmed, take it with a giant massive grain of salt. But if you don't want to know it, I would suggest pausing this video and in a couple months after the series has finished, come back to the video and hit play and finish it from there. So I'm gonna give you three seconds now to get out of here before I go into this theory, this rumor I should say, and, and, uh, and discuss this. Here we go, one, two, three. Okay, spoilery theory review time thingy. Well, we're waiting. Okay, rumor time, here we go. The rumor is coming from Miss Reddit account, leaks and rumors. Uh, simple enough, very basic here. And there's a, a Twitter exchange from Thwip T on Twitter. You see here, we see James Gunn himself in the show. That's not the cameo I'm talking about. Lisa Frankenstein is one of the surviving members. There's a new Creature Commandos lineup that's formed at the end of the show. And the final one here is we see Batman's shadow at one point. Batman's shadow at one point. James Gunn also on this press tour of Creature Commandos has mentioned that Batman Brave of the Bold and Batman 2 are being written, and also some movies will be rated R, but I'm doing a video on that for another day. So we know Brave and the Bold is coming, right? He announced that a long time ago. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the Brave and the Bold. And it's definitely in the works. Andy Muschietti will be directing it, but that's really all we know. We don't know who's playing Batman or whatnot, but we know whoever plays him in animation will also play him in live action. Now this is a silhouette, so that means they've escaped having to worry about who's gonna play him. And Batman, a Batman silhouette is a Batman silhouette, right? That's what makes Batman so beautiful, is just when you see the silhouette, you know exactly what you're getting. You know who that is, right? It's Batman. It doesn't matter if it's Tom Cruise. It doesn't matter if it's Michael Keaton. It doesn't matter if it's Michael B. Jordan or even Michael Jordan. It could be anybody in that suit. You won't know because it's a silhouette, so it doesn't matter. So now they don't have to worry about it. But why I like this so much is that you are getting Batman out of the way without him being in a movie or even having him part. If it's just a silhouette, if this happens to be true, which again, take it with a giant grain of salt. I'm not necessarily, necessarily sure I believe it. You take it with a giant grain of salt and you say, if this happens to be true, this is a genius way, a brilliant way to let audience know that, hey, the Batman is around. He is in this universe. So chill out, we'll get to him. But you know that he's there. And so when they get to him, whenever that is, we're like, oh yeah. He's been in here. He's already established without having to be established. I like it when they do this, right? Because you know that you know that James Gunn said that superheroes exist. So we're going to see Hawk Girl. We're going to see Mr. Terrific. We're going to see Guy Gardner. We're going to see obviously the other Lanterns as well in the Lantern Show. But where's Bat? Everyone's like, where's Batman, right? Because Batman, even if you're sick of Batman, Batman is still Batman. He is the creme de la creme of DC. And the Superman, Batman. You can argue which one's which, but I think, you know, I think Batman kind of takes it. And so having him there, referencing Batman, saying this character exists in this world, we're not focused on him yet. Because this is the thing, when we talked about the Penguin show, for all the weeks, like, why isn't Penguin in, why isn't Batman in the Penguin show? Well, we know he exists, and, when, and 
Throughout the series, it's kind of like, well, where is he? Why isn't he operating? You kind of just want a little reference of him. And at the end, you get the bad signal. And you're like, there he is. That's what's up. That's kind of what this is. This is letting the audience know, hey, Batman exists. We're not going to tell you who he is or who's playing him or where he is. You're not going to see his story yet, but he's in this world. He's established in this world. And characters probably know who he is and they know about the Batman. And they're going to go down that hole. And I think that's a great way of telling your story, of showing us little pieces here and there that these characters exist within your canon, within your story. You just don't need to worry about their story yet. Because that way when you get them, you know that they exist and they don't just come out of the blue. I think that's a problem Marvel started to have towards the end. It's like, well, where are these characters? And they're like, well, Miss Captain Marvel was in the 90s and, tele and now the Fantastic Four in the 1960s. But it's the future 1960s. That might work in Fantastic Four. I haven't seen that. I think it looks kind of cool. But, you know, you don't have to worry so much about, like, massaging the, the history of these characters because you're starting from scratch. And when you know you're going to do Batman, when you know you're going to do Wonder Woman, when you know you're going to do these characters, just sprinkle in little tidbits. Let the audience know, like, hey, we know you're anticipating them. Give us some time to flesh it out, to figure it out. But in the meantime, we're going to show you that they're in the world, that they're existing here, and they're paying attention to what's going on. So then when you get to them, you're not, like... Well, that came out of the blue. Brave and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. And I think it's great. I think that makes so much sense. And I think that's what storytelling needs. And that's what's going to make the DCU stand out is they're not going to be so focused on these mainstream characters right at first. You're going to get them like, oh my, Christian Commandos. Oh, there's a Batman reference. Cool. It's kind of like in Peacemaker season one, it ended with the Justice League, which apparently they're, re <laughs> they're going to redo that whole thing in some capacity. Like they're going to explain how the Justice League, Justice League isn't that Justice League that we saw at the end. I don't know how they're going to do it. We'll do a video on that as time goes, gets closer to Peacemaker, which I believe is releasing this summer. But I'm excited. But I like that idea. Give us little things. Let us know that this is a cohesive world that all exists within each other. And so these characters exist. And I love it. They don't have to be main characters. They don't even have to talk or have actors portraying them. Just a silhouette to let us know, hey, this character is in this world. We got your back. Brave and the Bold is coming. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. Let me know what you guys think of all this in the comments down below. Are you excited about the potential of a Batman silhouette reference cameo, whatever you want to call it, in Creature Commandos? And are you looking forward to Creature Commandos? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe. Congress said you can't use human prisoners. <laughs>